Hey, hello and welcome to JP's product pick of the week. And uh, I'm hoping... There we go. Hey, hello and welcome to JP's product pick of the week. I'm John Park and this is the time where we find out what I've picked this week and uh, give you some little demos and things. If you uh, don't know how this works, we actually hint pretty heavily with this right here. This will tell you what the product pick of the week is. And in fact, I don't mind saying it. It is this delightful little, very capable sensor board. It's called the APD-S9960. And it has proximity sensing, ambient light sensing, gesture sensing, and color sensing for reflected light or ambient light. Uh, And if you didn't know, you can probably... Uh, head on over to the product page for a bit of a treat. So check this out. This is the product page for the APDS 9960. And right there, if you go to that URL or if you use that QR code to head there, what you will see inside the product page is that we're doing an outrageous 50% off right now during this show only of the sensor. So uh, if you, if you, uh, are convinced during this segment when I uh, spend the next 15 minutes or so telling you why I like this board, and I'll give you a couple of demos of it. You can watch the show right inside that page. In fact, I'm going to head there right now. If I go over to the product page and scroll down, you'll see it right there. I'm not going to play it, but that will uh, play. That's the same video you're watching wherever you're watching it right now, right on YouTube, embedded in the product page. And uh, if I refresh this, I'll I'll risk it. My refresh has been slow and weird today. Uh, There we go. Refreshed it, and it is down 50%. So $3.75 instead of the usual $7.50 will get you this board. I think we have a limit of 10, no resellers. Uh, So head on over to this URL, this one right here, and watch the show inside the product page. Why don't you? Um, So let's see. What do I want to say about this board? Um, Before I get rolling too much... I'll say this is a board that we have had uh, for a few years in a different form, and now we have this Stemma QT version of it. If you don't know what Stemma QT is, Stemma QT, a lot of these are Stemma QT boards right here, uh, is part of our Stemma series of boards, which are modular boards. It means they can plug together. You can pick a microcontroller and then use these I squared C cables that are the same as the SparkFun. Uh, quick standard. That's the the Stemma QT, the smaller ones. It's a four pin connector that allows you to chain together a lot of different boards with no soldering required, no breadboarding. There's no kind of guessing and checking pins to figure out what connects to what. This will do it for you. You just plug in these lovely little cables. I'll show you a demo in a second. Uh, And we have over 50 boards in the Stemma QT lineup now. So this is... uh, Great time to go and check these out and get yourself some Stemma QT boards and start finding out what all the fuss is about. Uh, Speaking of the history of this board, what I wanted to do was take you back in time a little bit and we'll have Lady Ada talk about the origin of this board. Take it away, Lady Ada. The star of the show tonight beside you, Lady Ada. The APDS 9960. This is a really cool all-in-one sensor. Um, It's one of the most chock full of sensor sensors we've got. It's got a light sensor, a color sensor, an IR sensor, a proximity sensor, and a gesture sensor, all in one. And it doesn't cost that much more than like any one of those sensors on their own. So the light sensor is pretty simple. It's just like clear light sensing for, you know, just ambient light. It's got a red, green, blue filter sensor. So you can use it to, if you shine light on something, the color light will reflect off and then you'll be able to detect it. So you can uh, detect the color of objects or detect the color of light if you want to do uh, um, like color matching for like tungsten light versus fluorescent light, you can detect the light color. Uh, the IR sensing is interesting. So it's got four IR sensors, up, down, left, right. It's got, you know, in a grid. And it shines the IR LED. You can see that it's the bottom little dot of the sensor. It shines it, and then it can detect the amount of light that is hitting all four of those sensors, which means that with a little bit of code, what you can do is sense the changes 
across those four. And by sensing those changes, you can kind of tell something moving in front that's bouncing the IR light. You can sort of tell which way that thing is moving. So not only can you tell if something is close or far, like the proximity sensing, but you can also do, uh, you know, very basic um, motion and gesture sensing. So you can actually see the little IR dot because in IR mode. And I have this hooked up to, you know, just my feather with an OLED. These, these gesture sensors. Left, right. So you can see, you can move a little slowly, but it does detect which way you're moving. And then I can go up, down, up, yeah. This down. is cool. So we have up, down, left, right as a gestures built into the library. But you do get that raw data. So, you know, if you want to make your own uh, sensing directions, you could have it do like, you know, circular motion or like zigzag motion or, you know, close and left. You can do all sorts of stuff um, like tilted as long as you can measure those four cardinal location IR sensors that are, are in the package here. We have a revision to the APDS9960, the proximity gesture color sensor. Uh, if you liked it, we still have it, but now it's in STEM QT format. So you've got that plug and play, quick compatible STEM QTs on the side. Uh, still the same schematic, same breakout, same pinout, but it's just now in um, our kind of standardized STEM QT. We're really getting the hang of this size 0.7 by 1 inch, connectors on each side, breakouts along the bottom. Very easy to use. Uh, and of course, we still have Arduino and Python code for it. All right, yeah, so you can see this is a board that we started with in 2017, and now we've made this great revision for it to be STEM QT. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run over to the new product's mystery cabinet, which is reloaded every week by some sort of imp. I don't know. I've never seen this thing. Maybe Lars does it. Anyway, let me head over there and grab one, and then we'll do some demos. All right, yeah, whoo, okay, I've just gotten back from the long journey around my workshop to pick up my boards. So there it is, the APDS 9960. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I wanna show you a little demo where I'm gonna plug this in over the STEMI QT cable into an itsy bitsy, and I'm gonna set it up uh, right now. So here's, here's what I've got. I've got a uh, separate light source. So this is a little color mixer that I made using a Circuit Playground blue fruit and some sliders. And then here is, so that's just gonna provide some light that we can measure the color temperature of. Uh, and now I've got my, uh, this is an Itsy Bitsy M0 Express. And you can see I've added a little STEM QT cable to that. And uh, there you can see that a little better right there. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and plug this in. And either one will work actually, but we'll go that way so we're sort of right side up. And so now that little sensor package there is going to be used for detecting the components of red, green, and blue light. So I will, now that I've got this plugged in, I'm going to head over to Moo and let's uh, go ahead and open up the serial port in Moo. So hopefully this has made its new connection. Actually, instead of the serial port, I'm going to open up the plotter. Uh, and I'm gonna turn on this little light source here. I may need to reset the board. Let me, let me go ahead and reset the board. Yeah, it's not getting any signal yet. And then I'll rerun the plotter. Oh, it's not finding the device. Come on, device. Here, I'll replug this. Live demo action. Uh, uh, the question always is, what serial ports is it gonna find? Hey, it's working, good. Uh, so what you should be able to see now is I've got the Moo plotter here and as I adjust the amount of red, green, and blue light, this little sensor right here, our little APDS9960, is using its little color uh, diodes that have different filters over them to tell us how much red, green, and blue we're getting. So what this can be really useful for is things like 
uh, light temperature sensing if you're trying to color match for videography and photography, or if you want a device, let's say a, a tablet of some kind or a computer to adjust its color temperature based on the environment. So if you have a lot of tungsten lights, you might want to warm it up. If you have some bluish LEDs, you might want to blue it up. And that's just to keep your screen matching what you're seeing. So here you can see it's pretty nuanced. This has, uh, if I just go to a slightly warm light, you can see here my little light there is just sort of white with a little hint of yellow in it as I've pulled the blue component down. Uh, you can see that the Moo update, let me ask Moo to update over here. It might have to be open to update. There we go. Uh, is going to head towards a little redder. And if I s reverse those, you can see that blue component goes way up. There we go. That's a better demo of that. Uh, so that's one use of this. And if you look in the code here, you'll see how simple it is to use. There's actually some libraries in here that I don't even need. But the key one is that I'm bringing in the APDS 9960 library, setting up the sensor over I squared C. And that's how these stemma QT boards work over I squared C. I'm enabling proximity and I'm enabling color. I believe proximity needs to be on for the color to work, but I, I could be wrong on that. But with that enable color set on the sensor, it's then a matter of simply reading this uh, sensor RGBC. So C is clear and it's sort of the uh, combined light that's getting through even light that is beyond what those filters are filtering out for their individual sensors. Uh, and I think I had proximity, yeah. So I am checking proximity on this. I just don't think I'm printing that yet. I'm not printing that to the, uh, uh, to the plotter, but you will see that show up in serial display. It's just a little hard to read because it goes by kind of fast, but that's telling me the proximity I am as I move my hand closer or further. Uh, so that's one demo of something you can use this for, which is really interesting. And then another one I wanted to show you, let me go ahead and plug that, take that battery out. I'll move this one off to the side. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, let me, let me give you the full dramatic reveal version of this. And that is, uh, as you can see here, I've got this little complex looking gizmo. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit to show you that. Uh, so what I have happening here, and let's see if I can reorient that a little bit on that smaller view. There you go. Uh, what I have happening here is just a, a thing I whipped up this morning as sort of a proof of concept of doing something that you might find in a haunted house or an escape room or some sort of mystery type of puzzle situation where you learn some gestures that you have to do in front of a painting in order to open up a lock or a door or a lock box, something like that. Uh, and so what you'll see is I've got a, uh, it's not too well hidden in this case, but you'll see there, uh, I've got a little, uh, another one of these sensors right behind this little Rembrandt uh, self-portrait. And what happens is as I use my left to right, I lock that lock. As I use my, I'm oh, sorry, that was right to left. As I go to the right, let me try that again. Uh-oh, it's not sensing me. I've done something. There we go. Oh, I've, I've got the paper. <laughs> the Rembrandt paper is starting to cover the center a little bit. Uh, and I've also created a down and an up version of this. So you can see if I close that and then move up, I have that moving a little more slowly. Uh, too slowly, in fact, for it to go in that direction because the motor just won't won't pass it right now. Uh, so you can see here, this is kind of a neat way to do uh, escape room types of things. I think it also doesn't really like the lights that I've given it. So there we go. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've used my little OLED here so that while I'm learning, uh, sort of training it and figuring out distances and things, you can see there it got left registered. Uh, it, oh, it registered up that time. Okay. Let's do the up. Yeah, the down doesn't want to, down doesn't want to fire. We'll go left and then right. Okay, it's really liking up and left for some reason. Uh, and of course in software you could adjust which things lead to which motions. And like Lady Ada said in the video, you can do things a little more complicated such as having a series of gestures. Maybe you have to go left, right, right, and that will trigger it. And you could give feedback along the way if you need to. Uh, but it's a sort of an interesting application. You'll see if I open this up here, what's going on. I've just got a feather and a little motor driver feather wing to drive this uh, big DC motor. 
And then uh, I have my APDS 9960 just taped to the back of this printout of Rembrandt. And I have a battery in there just to make life easier as far as USB goes. And then just, you could unplug this once you're, once you're up and running, but that's my little uh, Stemma QT OLED. So that is another kind of cool usage uh, for this. And, and like I said, it also does regular proximity sensing and it does ambient uh, light sensing. So there's a lot of different things that you can use this board for. If you head to the uh, product page, which hopefully you're watching it from within here so that you can get your uh, discount buy up, up to 10 of them for half price. And if you uh, take a look on that page down let me see, let me pop myself back up here, hello me. If you head down to the bottom of the product page, you'll find the learn guide. If you open this up and click on that, that'll take you here to this learn guide. And within here, you'll learn how to use it both in Arduino and CircuitPython. Uh, you can also use it in um, uh, Linux using the Blinka, so straight up Python. Uh, and if you check out the downloads page of the guide, we always include the data sheet. So if you head here, you can see the data sheet for this lovely little sensor. And that'll tell you uh, all the details about it, as well as some use cases. They suggest things like um, sensing proximity to devices and changing screen tinting. Those types of uses are a typical one because this thing is so tiny and it has all those sensors packed into one place. Um, and the other thing I'll mention is if you're thinking about getting a bunch of these or some other stuff, we do now include free with orders over certain sizes, different items. We've done this for a long time, but now the new things we've added for orders over $149, you get a free Stemma QT board. And I think we have 15 different boards that you can uh, get. They're randomly selected and you won't get the same one twice until you've gotten all of them. So check that out. That's just under adafruit.com slash free. Um, so that is the lovely little board. It is our uh, Stemma QT re, uh, revamp of the APDS 9960. And uh, that is going to be my product pick of the week. So if you are interested, head on over and get one now. And uh, let us know in the comments or over on Discord what things you've used them for. We'd love to see how you're using these great Stemma QT sensor boards uh, every week. So for Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and that is going to do it for my JP's product pick of the week. And before I go, almost forgot, I will do, I'm going to unplug this one and do my ceremonious uh, hanging of the Stemma QT board on the Stemma QT pegboard of goodness back there. Let me get some things out of the way. And there it is, my product pick of the week, the APDS 9960. All right, thanks everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.